Imagine a bird taller than a person, so immense that it would tower over you if you met it in the wild, its shadow stretching across the forest floor. Some moa reached an astonishing three and a half meters, making them among the tallest birds to ever walk the earth. This was the moa, a true giant of New Zealand, or Aotearoa, a land where the unusual became the norm. It was wingless, with thick, powerful legs, striding through ancient forests and grassy plains, its footsteps echoing through the undergrowth. The moa wasn't just one species but a family of nine, each uniquely adapted to its own corner of this isolated land, from dense forests to open grasslands. For millions of years, New Zealand was a world apart, free from mammalian predators, where birds like the moa became the dominant herbivores, shaping the land in their image. Covered in shaggy feathers, with a small head and long neck, the moa browsed leaves, twigs and fruit shaping the forest as it fed and leaving a lasting mark on the landscape. The moa was an architect of its environment, spreading seeds, creating open spaces and maintaining the delicate balance of the ecosystem, ensuring the survival of countless plant species. Its presence was woven into the land, a living part of New Zealand's unique web of life, its influence felt in every corner of the wild. But this peaceful reign ended abruptly with the arrival of a new threat, humans, whose presence would change everything in an instant. The story of the moa is a powerful lesson about the fragility of even the most magnificent creatures, and how quickly a world can be transformed. For millennia, they thrived, perfectly suited to their world, until everything changed and their time came to a sudden end. Today, their ghost haunts the forests, a silent reminder of what once was and a call to remember the wonders that can be lost forever. The moa's life was one of peaceful foraging, sustained by New Zealand's rich plant life, some species browsed low ferns, others reached high for tree leaves, shaping the landscape with every meal. Moa weren't always solitary, evidence suggests they sometimes gathered in flocks, perhaps for breeding. Their calls, now lost to time, may have echoed through the valleys. They laid enormous eggs in simple ground nests, and raising chicks was a slow, vulnerable process. The moa's complete lack of wings was a result of evolving in a land without ground predators. Flight simply wasn't needed. Their powerful legs were their only means of movement and defense. This flightlessness made them a masterpiece of island evolution, but also left them unprepared for sudden change. Slow to breed and long-lived, their life strategy worked, until a new, intelligent predator arrived. The arrival of humans would change the rules of survival forever. The moa was the keystone of its ecosystem, filling the role of large grazing mammals. Their browsing-shaped plant communities, and some plants evolved defenses specifically against moa. Moa dispersed seeds across the land, helping forests thrive and maintain genetic diversity. When the moa vanished, this vital service ended and some plants still struggle to spread today. The moa's only natural predator was the host's eagle, a giant bird of prey that depended on them for food. When the moa disappeared, so did the eagle, two fates forever linked. The loss of the moa left an ecological void, forests changed, some plants became overgrown and the balance was lost. The intricate dance of life was disrupted and the ecosystem began to unravel. The forests of New Zealand are still haunted by this absence, a beautiful but incomplete picture. The giant's footsteps are gone, and the land is poorer for it. The legacy of the moa is a reminder of how one species can shape an entire world. For millions of years the moa's story was one of stability, these giant flightless birds roamed the forests and grasslands of New Zealand, perfectly adapted to a world without mammalian predators. Their only threats were the slow changes of nature itself, but everything changed about 800 years ago, when the first people set foot on these remote islands. The arrival of humans marked a turning point in the history of New Zealand's wildlife. The ancestors of the Maori discovered a land of abundance teeming with unique creatures. Among them, the moa stood out as the greatest prize, large, slow-moving and completely unafraid of humans, having never encountered such a threat before. With no instinct to flee, the moa became easy targets for the new arrivals, who quickly realized how vulnerable these birds were. Early Maori hunters used fire to clear forests and coordinated drives to herd and capture moa, leaving behind vast middens, ancient rubbish heaps filled with their bones and eggshells. Every part of the moa was used, Bones were shaped into tools and ornaments, eggs became containers, and their soft feathers adorned cloaks worn by chiefs and elders. The moa quickly became central to Maori survival and culture, providing food, materials and even spiritual significance. But the scale of the hunt was unsustainable. Moa were slow to breed and their populations couldn't recover from the relentless pressure of hunting and habitat loss. Couldn't recover from the relentless pressure of hunting and habitat loss. In what amounts to a geological blink of an eye their numbers plummeted. 
entire populations vanished from regions where they had once thrived. One after another, the great flocks disappeared, leaving only empty nests and silent forests behind. As the larger species vanished, hunters turned to smaller birds, driving a wave of extinction that swept across both the North and South Islands. The arrival of humans, combined with widespread forest clearing and the introduction of new predators, created a perfect storm for New Zealand's unique wildlife. The gentle giant, ruler of its kingdom for millennia, now faced an existential threat it could not overcome. The end for the moa was swift and irreversible, a tragic chapter in the story of life on these islands. The moa's reign, once so secure, was over, leaving behind only echoes in the silent forests of New Zealand. The extinction of the moa was shockingly fast. Within just a couple of centuries of human arrival, all nine species were gone. The forests fell silent, missing their deepest, most resonant voice. Maori oral traditions remember the moa as creatures of legend, lost forever. The phrase, ka ngaro ite ngaro ate moa, lost as the moa is lost, became a proverb. Overhunting was the main cause. The moa's slow breeding couldn't keep up with human pressure. Even a small amount of hunting tipped the balance toward extinction. Habitat destruction from fire and agriculture squeezed moa populations further. Trapped between relentless hunting and a changing environment, the moa had nowhere to go. Their journey, millions of years in the making, ended in a tragic blink. The land was changed. For centuries the moa lived on only in legend and the colossal bones found in swamps and caves. Modern science has turned these remains into a treasure trove of information. Under the right conditions fragments of moa DNA survived for thousands of years. Scientists painstakingly extract and piece together these fragments, reconstructing large portions of the moa's genome. This DNA reveals there were nine distinct species, their relationships, and even feather colors. Surprisingly, the moa's closest living relative is the small tinamou of South America. This genetic information opens the door to a radical idea, de-extinction. Could we one day use this blueprint to bring the moa back to life? The idea of resurrecting the moa, once science fiction, is now a real scientific pursuit. The first step is assembling a complete moa genome from ancient DNA. Scientists could then use gene editing tools like CRISPR to modify the DNA of a living relative such as an ostrich or emu to match the moa's blueprint. The modified nucleus would be placed into an egg cell, which would then be incubated to hatch a moa chick. The process is complex and full of challenges, but the dream is powerful. Seeing a living moa would be a chance to restore a lost piece of natural heritage. It's not just about one species, it's about pioneering technologies that could help preserve and restore biodiversity. The quest to bring back the moa is a symbol of hope and scientific ambition. It's a chance to correct a past mistake and imagine a new future. The path to bringing back the moa is filled with scientific and ethical challenges. Ancient DNA is degraded and incomplete. Assembling a perfect genome is incredibly difficult. Even with a complete sequence, we don't fully understand how all the genes work together. Creating a viable embryo is another hurdle. An ostrich egg may not provide the right environment for a moa chick. To restore a population, not just a single bird, we'd need genetic diversity, multiplying the challenge. The New Zealand of today is different. The moa's world is gone. Without parents, how would a moa learn to survive? We'd be responsible for teaching a species we've never met. Ethical questions loom. Is it right to bring back a species into a changed world? Could it disrupt modern ecosystems? Some see de-extinction as ecological restitution. Others fear unforeseen consequences. These questions demand careful thought before taking such a monumental step. The quest to resurrect the moa is more than a story about one bird, it's a symbol of hope, a testament to human ingenuity, and a shift in our relationship with nature. It's about daring to imagine a world where we can undo some of the damage we've caused, and where lost wonders might walk the earth again. Extinction has always been final, a line that could never be crossed. But de-extinction challenges that idea, inviting us to rethink what's possible and to question the boundaries between past and future. Even if we never see a living moa, the science developed along the way has immense value. Every experiment, every breakthrough brings us closer to understanding life itself and the delicate balance of our ecosystems. Techniques for retrieving ancient DNA and advances in gene editing could help endangered species, restore lost genetic diversity, and even open new doors in human medicine, offering hope for species and people alike. Bringing back the moa would restore a keystone species helping to heal New Zealand's landscape. Their presence could revive ancient ecological processes supporting countless other plants and animals. For the Maori it could be a profound cultural moment, bringing a legend back to life, 
reconnecting with ancestral stories and honoring the deep ties between people and the land. The story of the Moa is a lesson in both loss and hope, showing our capacity for both destruction and redemption. It reminds us that our choices matter, and that healing is possible if we act with care and vision. The dream of hearing Amoa's footsteps in the forest again inspires us to push the limits of what's possible, to imagine a future where nature and humanity thrive together. It's a beacon for a future where we can not only prevent extinction, but perhaps begin to reverse it, restoring what was lost and protecting what remains. The ghosts of the past may yet enrich the world of tomorrow, guiding us toward a more hopeful, resilient and interconnected future.